the, the main thrust of what I'm going to talk about, and I'll shorten it because I'm, I'm wary that Marcus is also going to say a few words afterwards, uh, is to set up a, a pan-European collaborative. Um, I, I'll share just a few slides of our experience. So I'm based at Moorfields. I run the London Deanery Programme. We've had, I think, about 380 uh, in my time in charge fellows and residents come through the program that I'm describing. So we've had a fair amount of experience um, with IC users. So we, we have several regional centres, including St Thomas's, St George's and the Western Eye Hospital, um, and then about 30 other hospitals that then feed in. So the trainees, what we've tried to do is establish some sort of concordance between the different centres in the southeast initially, uh, and then thereafter what we've tried to do is network beyond. So we have our simulator, but there are several other simulators within a few miles of where we are. Uh, beyond that, many others have been purchased in southern UK and then nationally. And now I think the idea is to try and draw together the different facets. And I've, I've had uh, the pleasure of visiting several other countries in Europe uh, and beyond, looking at their <coughs> wet lab, dry lab and other facilities, looking at their simulators. So there are certain things that when I took over, um, I mandated. First of all, each trainee has their own personalised user account. This doesn't work in London, despite simulators being a few miles down the road from each other. When they log in at each site, they can't continue on where they left off. And that's one of the things that the cloud networked um, concept is due to deliver. So, uh, and I don't know in the US, I know in some of the other centres and some of the other European sites that there are various potential crossover but you the trainees themselves have to then re-log in at a certain and can't just continue on where they were the course itself we set up based on the uh, the IC modules we mandated that all trainees have to follow the same set sequence so they can't skip ahead uh, and what that does it forces them to do the full breadth because otherwise what we found at the beginning they would turn up they would do plenty of one, and I think Colin's evidence was absolutely astounding, brilliant, uh, but they don't then build, so they felt absolutely happy with their capsule rexis or their, their chopping, and then they wouldn't come back. So we've mandated various, not just courseware, um, certain time metrics, so that, and also supervised, so again we talked about um, my presence or someone else's presence, so mm -hmm. I'm physically present for three two-hour sessions in their first year of training, and that's for all of them. We have quite a, a lot of trainees, so it limits, uh, but I, get, I have an afternoon a week throughout the year. Um, Thursday afternoons, that's my simulation session, they come in, they book in, we have an online booking system, and we coordinate the London region so that they all come and they all then pass through their structured sequential course. We have previously analysed and we're still collecting data, so we do entry baseline and exit baselines, so at certain set uh, parts of the course we then get them to reassess these same three, four, uh, and this is going to be part of the, the European model uh, that we'll, uh, we'll be introducing, and it's, uh, the idea of that is to then look at graded progression on the simulator. So as you've heard from the other speakers, we know that there's translational benefit, we know that there's cognitive benefit. There's probably a lot of other benefits that we haven't even looked at. Uh, but if it's mandatory, if there are certain set elements that they have to uh, progress through, we, we also have gated uh, elements and they need to pass, depending on which module, at a certain score, three in a row, because again, we deem that statistically uh, relevant so that they haven't fluked it, as you've uh, rightly alluded to. The idea then is that they do a basic course, they then move on in our uh, system to a second, slightly more advanced course, uh, and I'm going to, um, where, where they do weak zonules and, uh, and other bits. And the idea now with the European uh, model that we're looking at, and again, this is an, a pretty open invitation to all sitting in the room, whether you're in Europe or not, that the direct European one will be for European participants, but I know that there are other similar ones elsewhere in the world, is to then have the more advanced modules as a progression, so it all stays on one account. We mandate that at the end of the year, uh, they have to upload their, on their e-portfolio and at their annual appraisal, they then upload the reports that they download with their little USB stick. And I won't show the full breadth of videos because Marcus, I don't want to chew up what little time you'll have. 
Um, so this was the, the data that we published from one of the very earliest studies, and a lot more has been built on it, but it was just showing the actual significant degree of improvement even after um, a handful of hours on the simulator. So the actual technical skills improved immensely, uh, and we now know, uh, based on all the other work that you've heard today and beyond, uh, that that's very much translatable into, um, into the OR. So the, the complex bits, again, we don't normally allow the more junior trainees to then have too much of a play on the more complex, because it muddies the water somewhat. So we do make them pass through more basic modules. We, we also have a concurrent program, so they do an amount on the simulator, but it's always done in conjunction with fixed sessions in the OR. One of the things that I did is, other than for my own fellow, who is actually quite experienced, uh, just because of the nature of the program that I run, I don't sit in the OR with any of the, the trainees that come through. And I did that very deliberately, so that any technical difficulties that they're having, they can do separate to what they're learning with their trainer. So there are some idiosyncrasies that they'll have, but equally they can speak freely. If they're having other political or structural issues, then this doesn't interfere, and we found that that model has worked extremely well. So this will be the last one that I'll, uh, I'll put up, and then I will hand over to Marcus. Marcus, do you want us to take some questions with regards to the e Either European the right study? Um, um, so if, if you're interested in participating, it's going to be this platform, this model. We've upgraded it. There are certain networking uh, elements that you'll have to have in place. We have to take down your unit's firewall, you need to plug it in. IC are very good at then helping to upload the latest software, you just need to make sure your contracts and other bits are up to date. Before I sound as the commercial division of IC, I have no financial interest, but, uh, but in terms of coordination, there's no point in you having, um, and we've, we've had this in London, where people's contracts are way out of date, they don't have the latest software releases, so they don't have the same modules, and then we can't run the same study. So uh, it's important that we're all integrated in. Uh, on the same page and at the same level. Um, and then it, it works through like this. I think the only variance is going to be uh, whether the, you're going to have an attending consultant actually physically present the same number of times. But I think as been mentioned before, uh, IC does run itself in many respects and it's when they then get stuck, they can usually, as long as there is someone to source to then help talk them through it, that usually works very well. Marcus, thank you. I'll, I'll hand over to you. You've got a few minutes.